Well, greetings all on this glorious Monday morning. Yes, it's Monday, and uh, we're starting a new week of Brian's Bible Break. I'll be doing Monday, Tuesday, I'll be off Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday. So that'll be our schedule for this week. And uh, this morning we are looking at Psalm 147 and verse 5 from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us and we rejoice in it. Lord, we're grateful for all of the ways that you provide abundantly for us, the ways that you meet us where we are and minister to our hearts. And so, Lord, as we come into your presence this morning to pause and reflect on your word, would you speak into our hearts a word of encouragement and hope for this day? Would you quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. A reading from verse 5. How great is our Lord! His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. How great is our Lord! That's not a question. It's actually a statement. It's, it ends with an exclamation point, Mark. It is a statement. How great is our Lord? What a wonderful truth, friends, that we worship and we serve a great and mighty God, the God of all creation, the God who formed this very planet earth that we live on that we exist on and that we he formed us for himself for his pleasure how great is our lord we look around our uh, around our world our community at the beauty of the creation all the marvelous works of his hands the beautiful flowers the trees, nature that we get to see when we're out and about. Susan and I delight in, in seeing bunnies and squirrels and birds as we're out walking, as we walk to the church. They're all part of God's marvelous and wonderful creation. How great is our Lord. We look into the skies at night and see the, the stars and the planets, the moon, and, and, and all of these God has placed in their course. And we marvel at the beauty of his creation. How great is our Lord. And we watched on the news the incredible accomplishment of uh, Richard Branson, who touched space in the first ever um, commercial near-orbit experience, where he and a group of people were able to touch the outer reaches of our atmosphere for a short period of time and to behold the glory and the beauty of this planet, which only astronauts have been able to experience firsthand up until now. But Richard Branson and, and we know um, Elon Musk is working on something and, and uh, Jim Bezos is, is Jeff Bezos is, is going to do a similar uh, thing in a couple of weeks. But with all of these innovations, we are only able to see just a glimpse of the glory of God's creation. How great is our Lord! His power is absolute. 
We don't like to talk about absolutes today as a society. We don't like to talk about absolute truth, absolute power, absolute will. It's not popular today to talk about the Bible as the absolute truth. It's common for you to hear people say, it is a truth, or it's your truth, but it's not my truth. But Jesus said, I am the way. I am the, the, the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Society may not like to acknowledge absolute truth. But Jesus is the absolute truth made flesh. The Word of God is the absolute truth. And Jesus, the Word made flesh, is the absolute truth. He will never let us down. He will never abandon or forsake us. His power is absolute. Exclamation mark. It's a statement that the psalmist is making. His understanding is beyond comprehension. We know in part now, only in part, but we can't understand the intricacies of God's creation. We can appreciate it, we can enjoy it, we can observe it, but we can't understand it. As the prophet Isaiah says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways, says the Lord. We can't know and understand all of the ways of the Lord. But we can discern his will, and we can ask God, to reveal his will to us. And he will reveal that to us. We may not understand, but we can know his will. His understanding is beyond comprehension. The joy for us as believers in the risen Christ, friends, is that we have an opportunity as followers of Christ to know him more intimately, to understand him more intimately. Not fully, not this side of glory anyway, but we can know him more and more each and every day when we spend time with him, when we spend time in his word, when we spend time in prayer, when we listen to his still small voice speaking to us. We cannot know and understand him more and more each day as we grow more and more like Christ each and every day. And Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, now we see dimly as in a mirror. Then we will see fully. Now we know only in part. Then, that is in glory, we will know fully even as we are fully known now by Almighty God. The God who created us, the God who knit us together in our mother's womb. The God whose power is absolute. The God whose understanding is beyond our comprehension. How great is our Lord. How great is our Lord. This psalm actually begins with this statement, Praise the Lord. And it ends with, 
that same refrain, praise the Lord. When we think about how great our Lord and God Almighty is, it moves us to praise and worship, giving him glory and thanksgiving for all the wonders of his creation and all the blessings that he bestows upon us. It turns our hearts to joyfully praising him for giving us the opportunity to experience his greatness, his power, the beauty of his creation. And so, friends, I encourage you as you begin this day, as you journey through this day, be open to God revealing himself to you in beautiful and majestic and awe-inspiring ways. And give him praise and glory. Praise the Lord and rejoice in his presence in your life. Rejoice in his blessings upon you. Rejoice in his hand of favor leading you. Rejoice in his love which is showered upon you. And be filled with a peace which passes all understanding, which comes from him when we seek him with our whole heart. How great is our Lord? There are not words to express his greatness and his love and his grace and his compassion and forgiveness, which is poured out on all who seek him with a whole heart. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God who created all of creation. And yet you are still the God who comes in close and meets us where we are and ministers to us in the midst of life, in the midst of our challenges and our struggles and our suffering and our brokenness our sinfulness and our weakness, Lord. And you give us strength. As you said, O oh Lord, to Paul, in, in our weakness, your power is made strong. So, Lord, in our weakness, we come to you. In our weakness, we surrender ourselves to you. In our weakness, Lord, we submit ourselves to your will being done. And we proclaim the absolute truth, Lord, that you are Lord. And you are great, and greatly to be praised as your Son, Jesus Christ. The absolute power, the absolute truth. We worship you, Lord. We seek to walk humbly with you this day. So, Holy Spirit, direct our steps that we may see your face shining before us. We thank you for this time, Lord. We pray that you will guide us through this day with grace and with love. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures. So, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.
See you tomorrow, friends.